Hello again, and welcome to the second tutorial for Curves to Mesh. This video will look at how a mesh is created from the curves, some visualization settings that will help you, and how to create a slightly more complex network of curves. First of all, let's have a look at how an object is created from these curves by default. If you select the curves and then press Tab, to enter edit mode, you'll see, as described before, the control handles that can manipulate each of these curves. And although this looks like a solid object, this curve is actually made up of four curves. So there's one, two, three, four, arranged in a square. And what the default setting for curves to mesh does, which is here, called surface to mesh, is takes a square network of curves that are arranged like into a surface and can, does a grid fill on them. So it'll always create this patchwork network of quad faces based on this square grid. So if I select just one of these control points and press G to move the curve around, you'll see that this separate curve is being moved out and then curves to mesh won't fill in the whole mesh because it's not connected anymore. It's not making up a square. So if I select the magnet snap button up here, I can snap these control points to each other. So if I click this snap button and then hit vertex snap to vertex, I can then press G and then move the curves into position. So before we go any further, let's alter Blender's display a little so it's a bit more clearer when we want to manipulate these curves. So first of all, there are a few settings you can try changing. So first of all, if you go to Edit Preferences and select the Interface tab, uh, you'll see there's a line width setting which sets all the thickness of the lines and on the higher resolutions, it's a little hard to see these curves. So let's change this from default to thick. And here you'll see it's a slightly thicker display. You can go even further by going back to the Edit Preferences menu and changing the resolution scale setting. This will increase the size of the Blender viewport, but I'm going to leave that just the same now, which is a setting of one. You can also change the colors of the lines if you wish. If you go to themes, there are these color settings and by default they are black. So we're looking at the wire and the wire edit settings in particular. So if we want to change this to a different color, let's say with a pinkish red, you can also do that as well, make the edit mode a little bit more pink. And you'll see this automatically updated in the viewport. And finally, for displaying, if you go to the viewport overlays panel on the top right hand side and make sure that the handles all setting is set so that you can see all the control handles at once, not just one that is selected, which was the default. So with all that done, let's start creating a slightly more complex network of curves so that you can start to understand where curves to mesh would fit into your workflow. So uh, there are a few more uh, tips and tricks here. So if you want to select just this one curve, for instance, um, and you don't, and sometimes it's a bit tricky if the control points are overlapping. Is that you can select perhaps this, the end of this curve, which would be this part here, and then hit the L key, and this would select all linked control points. And then what you can do, if we select the these other two curves here, one and two, by pressing the L key again, so you will get one, two, three curves selected, but not this one. If we 
press Shift D, we can duplicate those curves. And if we hit the X key, we can restrict the movement to the X axis. And then what we can do is start to create a network of these square patches. So I'll just move it out so that it's just touching here. And what I can do then is actually link these curves together individually. So if I if I move if I press G and move this around and then snap these curves together into one, you can see that a more a more nuanced curve network is created. So this will create a one object that's got slightly uh, more nuanced surface. And then I can recreate this process by, uh, say, selecting these sides here by hitting the L key again. <clears throat> uh, and then by hitting D again, and then this time pressing the Y button, I can move these along. And I'll just move them sort of close to the next one, and then I'll snap these curves together. And here you can see it's like a little sort of patched quilt that's um, appearing. So let's just take a moment to talk about how the add on is working. So it isn't actually working on what's currently selected, what it's working on is the collection that the curves are under. So I can show you this uh, because it doesn't just work on selected object. So if you wanted to have separate curves all connected to one another, uh, you can do that too. So let's just select uh, this curve here and let's uh, move it out. So it will disappear the part of the uh, patch network. And it's still connected as one object. But what I'll do here to show you how this will work is if you press separate, and press the P button for the separate option, this will separate the curve out into a separate object. So if I hit tab to come out of edit mode and select just this one curve, it is a completely separate object. It's separate to to these. If I disable the preview mode for a moment, you can see that these are two separate objects. If I re enable the preview mode and then move this object over here and then press tab to enter edit mode, you'll see that just this curve is selected, but I can still connect these curves together. And here it will still create the same object. So I designed that uh, just under a collection and not to be associated with whatever's selected so that you can create lots of different curves separately and not get overwhelmed by having just one big object of curves with lots of different uh, um, control points, which could get confusing. The other thing to talk about here is the um, ability to subdivide these curves so you're not just restricted to having um, singular control points uh, in the curve. So again, if I if I select this whole curve, what I can do then is right click on the context menu that appears and click the subdivide option. And what this actually does is creates a new control point between the selected control points I have. So I can I can do that again by selecting these two control points here and then right clicking and then subdivide. And I've got two new control points here that I can also manipulate by say hitting the G key. Uh, I can restrict that by pressing G and then Z. And I can create uh, more interesting shapes like this. Now I think that's a good time to pause for now. In the next video I'll talk about some of the other settings on the control panel and some of the other modes that Curves to Mesh has. 
I'll talk about some more complex edge cases and how you might work around them. And then I'll start to look at some of the more complex examples on in curves to mesh for you to understand how curves to mesh will help in Blender.